What sort of mini should I paint next? <laughs> Dave. Dave. You will paint the most ridiculous miniature you have. Ridiculous mini? What? Painting that miniature will give you insight in becoming a master such as I. Master Leif! Master Leif! <sighs> well, I guess we're a painting of the most weird miniature I have. Hey good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint minis or craft terrain for the tabletop. This week I'm going to paint up this flail snail inspired mini from Reaper Miniatures called the Thrasher Snail. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so here it is, the weirdest miniature I have in my collection. So this is Reaper's version of a flail snail, uh, or in Reaper calls it a thrasher snail. Now looking at this, you can see that it's made out of Reaper bones black material, which is a little bit better than the normal uh, or first waves of Reaper bones. It goes together somewhat easily, just to sort of dry fit everything, and make sure that you know it looks okay. Now. Cleaning Reaper models can sometimes be a little bit of a drag, to be honest, because they're somehow softer than Whiskit's models, but yeah, I try to get most of the parts away. Now, I didn't have a base that fit the size, so I took some of that super sculpy grey that I used for the miniature giant doors, and I cut it out using uh, one of the shapes I have from Green Stuff World. Now once I cooked that, I started drawing out the shape of a snail, because looking at the lore in uh, the Dungeons and Dragons universe, these snails leave a trail which a lot of people are, you know, can scavenge and sort of create, you know, windows of and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> flail snails, for all their weirdness, is actually a very peaceful creature that's an elemental. Now you can see here, I start by defining out the edges using some different size you know basing from army painter this i just sort of use an activator and super glue to get there you know quickly now once i have that and the snail uh, in place i put down some finer grout behind the snail as you can see this will sort of signify well i guess the trail of the snail <laughs> A snail trail. So when it came to the actual shell, the idea was because it's supposed to be like iridescent and like shimmering in all kinds of colors. So I started out with, uh, you know, just uh, priming everything using uh, Vallejo uh, black. Now, my idea with the shell was that I was going to use color shifting paint. And if there's any lesson here, it is that, um, well, Color shifting paints uh, are cool, but uh, yeah, this is going to be a lesson in, in how they work. And I don't know, in all honesty, how many times I used different color shifting paints, but we're going to find out. Anyways, uh, I zenithal primed the actual snail, and here we start with some psychotic illusion, which I thought would, you know, go over well. And what I've heard is that you're always supposed to use black to, you know, uh, as a basing when you do these uh, color shifting paints. Now that went on fairly smoothly because I shut it out of the airbrush and it looks cool, but it looks nothing like the actual concept art. So I'm um, coming in with a supposedly brighter uh, color shifting paint and, uh, you know, shooting that on did barely, you know, see a difference perhaps the highlights were a little bit brighter so here i'm coming in with the third one because i wanted a little bit more shifts in color and i i think at this point i honestly just sort of like 
you know what? Screw it. Let's just try it. Let's go wild. Let's see what can what what damage we can do. And here, I think I'm you know gauging whether or not uh, I have something good, but I've still felt like it was too dark. So I'm actually coming in with some Vallejo uh, white aluminum, and this is also a very you know thinned uh, out uh, paint, which is quite nice. Now, the thing I liked about this one was that, oh, all of a sudden the sparkle was there. And here I'm even, <laughs> I got some accidental spider webbing at some point, but I liked sort of how the lines came out of it. So I, I figured I'm, I'm just going to try that a little bit to make some, you know, some very faint, you know, lines, because this is not supposed to be, a, uh, you know, a metal shell, but more a shell made out of some sort of strange material which actually um, in the DD lore like these are worth like 5000 gold and you can like create armor and stuff out of it i think now i'm sort of getting close to what eventually became the final solution here i'm trying to use that emerald color shifting and then sort of you know spray from above like a zenithal with that uh, silver and then i'm covering it back with emerald and I sort of liked the shift between darkness and light, but I still felt like there wasn't enough of a, you know, punch in the colors. Uh, they were a little bit too muted, uh, in my opinion. But I did like the shine a lot more on this one. It felt like, you know, okay, yeah, yeah I'm, I have one part of the puzzle. So, eventually, I think I uh, started, uh, you know, shooting in some some inks because I knew these were saturated so here I'm coming in with some turquoise and I'm shooting that from above but again now we're losing a little bit of that color shift so now I'm going to come in with some deep violet to sort of create a shift uh, a manual shift so to speak and this I'm sort of trying to I guess create on the horizon line if that makes sense so this sort of became a non-metallic metal, but actually metal shell, but I liked the result in the end. Here I'm just sort of coming in with some, uh, some uh, wash just to sort of darken the, the shadows a little bit. And I think here I'm just sort of uh, putting on a gloss varnish just to make sure that I don't lose any of those uh, nice colors I've had so far. Especially those inks, because they they are not very water resistant. Now, in my futility uh, against uh, you know when assembling this, I thought that this eye stalks or flail stalks or whatever looked a little bit weird. And sure enough, like those things in between, they they were just there for you know, I guess support. So this is the main color scheme I'm going to be using for the flail snail. So I'm starting out with, uh, you know, the brownest part uh, at the very bottom of the snail. And then I quickly wet blend that into uh, a nicer sort of orange and moving quickly so that the colors get, you know, some time to easily blend into each other. And I do this sort of uh, mostly on the, you know, upper part of the body. And then finally towards the flails, I'm blending that with uh, pure orange, uh, which I'm also wet blending in. And here I'm, you know, don't use a nice brush. Just use your, you know, cheap synthetic brush and move quickly. This is, you know, rough uh, paint strokes, you know, broad strokes. And then finally I come in with, I think it was Mephiston Red at the very uh, tips or tops of the flails and I wet blend this as well moving quickly as I said and this was actually a little bit more difficult than one could imagine because it wasn't just uh, one side that needed to be wet blend it was all you know all sides of these uh, flails and it's very easy to forget one when you're one side or one flail when you're doing this now the underside, I just sort of stippled in a little bit more brighter colors just to keep a little bit more visual interest. But I think at this point, I really have sort of a nice base coat. However, I wanted to pull out some of those shadows. So I'm coming in with Seraphim Sepia, one of my favorite washes. And I am really trying to just, you know, darken everything a little bit and make sure that, you know, I get some nice contrast there. 
Now, once that has dried, I'm going to come back in with the same colors I used and start, you know, layering on top. I'm doing this on all of the ridges and all of the small little dots and whatnot. And I think I actually went, uh, you know, could have gone a little bit further, but yeah, at least I get some sort of nice shape there. I think the color I used for the ground was chocolate brown from Vallejo model color. And once that had dried, it was time to start dry brushing that. And I'm just using an ash gray, which is a neutral gray color uh, on the rocks, specifically on the side of the snail. This really helps to just get some sort of differentiation in the, the basing of the, the miniature. Now here I'm going to come in with some sun yellow and this is the highest uh, highlight I went with. I felt like the mini uh, lacked a little bit of, you know, pop. And once I have that done, I'm going to come in with some Agrax Earth Shade on the actual ground. And this is just to sort of bring everything down a little bit more. Now at this point, it was time to put on the shell. And as you can see, I'm sort of working with complementary colors a little bit just to make this <laughs> as ridiculous as it possibly can be. Now, uh, there were some spikes on the actual shell, so I just, you know, penciled these in with some white aluminum. Now, talking about saturation, I'm going to come in with some red ink, artist ink, and I'm just, this is actually a transparent thing, so the good part is I'm really just punching up the saturation in the, the tip of the flails. Uh, just to make them, you know, look really, really nasty, you know, red. Now, my plan to for the actual sort of uh, snail trail was to use some iridescent medium with some UV resin. Um, this, I don't know, it didn't really come out as transparent as I originally wanted it to. It, it became a little bit too milky white, but um, the idea was okay. But I have to say, I'm, I'm really, um, even though I like UV resin, man, the smell, it's terrible. <laughs> it really is uh, quite disgusting. Now, uh, at this point, I think I am actually going through the entire model and just sort of uh, airbrushing on some gloss varnish. Now, to pull that back on the actual ground, uh, I just, you know, dab on some matte medium and, uh, yeah. Pretty much just, you know, uh, paint it on the sides where where there's just normal dirt. Now, coming up to the finishing stages, I uh, paint the rim. And I have to say, this base actually turned out pretty nice. I, it's quite nice to have, you know, those options at hand when you need it. Now, as finishing touches, I'm just going to add some uh, tufts, and for this I'm using super glue and some woodland tufts from Army Painter. This, uh, I chose green just to sort of get some variation in the base. Now the base is almost done, but I wanted the, you know, a feeling of, you know, dryness and, and dirtness. And for this, I'm using some Vallejo pigments, which I sort of stipple on the ground at the sides. And that will conclude everything that's needed for the base. And I think it's time to have a look at the final result.
All right, folks, now we know what my weirdest miniature was. I have recently been painting a lot of, you know, darker things, so it was kind of nice uh, with, you know, a palette cleanser with something more, you know, saturated and vibrant in colors. So what did you think about the paint job? Please feel free to comment uh, down below. Now, if you like this channel and you want to support it, there is a number of ways you can do so. Like or share the video, subscribe if you already haven't, and finally, you can join my Patreon. And on that note, I want to thank my patrons for their support. But especially, I want to do a shout out to my warrior level patrons, Blake Crowell and Chris Grot. You guys rock. So with this, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.